This problem, given the rather elaborate input voltage Vs, which starts at zero, uh, goes up, comes back down, goes back up, comes back down, and then stays down after that point. Uh, we have a simple LC circuit, and we want to find the output across the capacitor. The fact that we have zero volts for a long time prior to the activity means that we have zero uh, initial conditions. So our S domain circuit is essentially found as the in inductance times S for the inductor. The other one takes our capacitance 1 over CS like that. So that would be 10 over S. So we convert that into the S domain by finding the Laplace transform of Vs of t. We need to find an equation for that. Having done that, the Laplace version of our output is given by a voltage divider. So we have 10 over S divided by 10 over S plus S over 20 times Vs of S. So before we can find our output, we need to find the Laplace domain version of our somewhat elaborate input. I'm going to follow the technique of dividing the waveform into distinct regions. So you, look, you tend to look for the discontinuities and then concentrate on how to write the functional form inside. Um, let me concentrate on these one step at a time. So I'll call this region 1, 2, 3, and 4. So for region 1, uh, we have something that looks like just a Uh, basically has a functional form of T and the slope of that would be the rise over run. So we have a rise of 2 volts over 2 seconds. So that means we have a slope of unity in that case. And we need to make that turn on at time 0 and then turn off at time 2. So this is the way I'm going to deal with each one of these regions. Try to identify the functional form here, uh, figure out when it starts, and then where it stops, and then you use step functions to turn it on and off that way. In region 2, I also have something that looks essentially like T for the functional form. It has a slope of the rise over run being a rise of negative 1 over 1 second in this case. And it has an intercept at positive 4. So if you kind of study this a little bit, you can see that if I project that line up here, we'd hit the axis at plus 4. So we take I'll do it this way. Take that quantity. Let's try that again. Take this quantity. Start it at 2. Stop it at 3. I'll go ahead and put down the remaining results for 3 and 4. At this point, uh, if you like, you might want to pause the video and try to see if you can work these out yourself just to make sure you're comfortable with it. So having constructed these equations for each of the four different regions, Vs of t is simply uh, the sum of those. So let's take this, put it into maple, 
and start with the standard behavior there. Next thing I'm doing is defining a function for u so I don't have to keep typing Heaviside over and over again. And I enter in my time domain function for vs. Let's just, uh, what I'm doing here is just plotting my function vs from 0 to 10 seconds just to make sure it's correct. So we, in fact, do look okay there. So my input waveform converted to S domain format looks like this. And what I ended up doing here is leaving C and L as their uh, original values and then just saying that I've got a, a numerator and a denominator based on my voltage divider equation. So my output then is numerator divided by denominator times my source voltage. And that gives me the result right there for output voltage in S domain format. Then I'm converting to time domain. Get a really sort of big looking equation right there. Again, the goal here was to focus on getting the plot. So let's go ahead and plot the result. So if you look at this, you can see that we have kind of the two triangular peaks showing up, and then we have a high frequency sinusoidal oscillation, which is associated with the natural resonant frequency of our LC circuit. So with that plot, of course, if you were doing this on your own, you'd want to make sure that you give it good